Do you feel the presence of the Lord in here on this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This song simply says, Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God.
on, let's just take that in for a moment. I just want to be with you, Lord. Not only do I want to be with you, but I need you to fill this place. I'm not just talking about this sanctuary. I'm talking about this place. The place in my heart that only God can fill. Come on, can we just take a moment and just touch yourself and say, Lord, fill this place. I need your power. Fill this place. I need your healing. Fill this place. I, I need your deliverance. God, I need you to fill this place. There is no one that can fill this place like my God. There's no one. I can, I've tried so many different things, but nothing fits. Nothing works. Nothing it treats me like my God. It's the only thing that can fix what ails me. The only thing that can heal me. The only thing that can deliver. The only thing that can set me free is God filling this place with his spirit. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for filling this place. Thank you for filling our hearts and thank you for filling our minds, God, with only you. Only you, God. Lord, we thank you. We honor you, oh God, for there's no one like you. And Lord, now we stop by just to have your glory, just to bask in your glory, to bask in your Shekinah glory. Father, as your spirit inhabits this sanctuary, Father, we thank you that we have the opportunity to just come and to just take in. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Come on, let's just take a moment. Just take in the glory of the Lord. Father, we magnify you. Hallelujah. God, we glorify your name. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. No one like you, God. We've tried everything. No one does it like you. God, we magnify your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of our God. For he is worthy of all honor, worthy of all power, worthy of our praise, worthy of our worship. Thank you, Lord. Glory to the name of our God. Hallelujah. about you, but God's been good to somebody this week. God, God, God has touched somebody this week. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we just take a moment as we just bask in this, the presence of the Lord. You could rest on your feet just for a moment as we prepare to hear from God. Hallelujah. Jesus. From the word of the Lord. From Jeremiah, just two verses. Called him the weeping prophet. Jeremiah chapter number one. Looking at verses 4 and 5, it reads, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Pray with me on the second part of our series, The Assignment, as we deal today with the subject, when the assignment collides with reality, when the assignment collides with reality.
Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for filling this sanctuary with your glory. But more important than that, oh God, we thank you for filling our hearts with exactly what we need. And we thank you, God, that you have been good, you've been merciful, better to us than we have been to ourselves. And now, God, we have the opportunity to hear from you, to, to desire, we desire a word from you, oh God. And we pray, Father, that you would touch us right in the middle of the situation and circumstance that we need to hear from you. Lord, we ask that, they, that the people did not just come for a word to tickle their ears, but they would come for, from, for a word to grow, a word to encourage, a word to keep them going just a little bit longer. But Father, I realize that I am not worthy. So Lord, we give this time into your hands. Use this vessel, marred, fragmented, unworthy, to pour out a word from you. Lord, we thank you for the waiting congregation that we know that our hearts have been prepared from the praise and the worship, the singing of your word as we lifted up holy hands. And now, Father, speak to us today. And we will be careful to give your name praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. The assignment. You know, we, we, we've been discussing this assignment for a little while now and 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 I believe that I don't I don't know how long we're gonna go we'll this could be it or we may have some more I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> uh, but I'm just so grateful to the Lord for for continuing to uh, to speak to us and I, I just know that there is uh, there's something for each one of us as I've spoke to some individuals even today um, as we talked about their circumstances I I, I just couldn't help but hear this word uh, speaking through, uh, addressing the circumstance, the situation that they're going through. And I, I, I couldn't help but just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for being an on-time God. And so, so over the last few weeks, we've established that God has an assignment for each one of us. Uh, we, we, we determined that God designed and, and, and established that assignment before we were even born. And, 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 at, and at the appropriate time, we were birthed into the earth realm, uh, but, but, but it wasn't at that moment. It was in due season when we were ready to, uh, to receive and, and to carry out the assignment that then we were called to, to walk into the assignment. And I think that it's very important that we, we, we realize from, from this is just connecting knowledge or reminder kind of knowledge uh, uh, that, that God did not give us an assignment uh, without providing resources. God did not did not did not uh, uh, call us into that assignment without giving us the resources, without uh, uh, giving us a word to speak, and and more importantly, he didn't do it without making a commitment to us that he would never leave us while we're in the middle of the assignment. And I don't know about you, but that kind of gives me a level of comfort to know that uh, in difficult times, when, when, when we're in an assignment that is just not going the way that we had hoped it would go, uh, we, we can take comfort in knowing that God said, I'm not going to leave you. So no matter what it looks like, uh, it's, I'm, I've got your back. The problem is that sometimes we as believers, when things get hard, we, we, we want to throw in the towel. Uh, many a times we, we want to just uh, give up midway. When, when things get tough, we, 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 we get this, this impression that if I'm on assignment from God, then everything should be peaches and cream. Everything is, a, a God put me on the assignment, so, so he must be uh, going to, to move every obstacle out of the way so I don't have to deal with it. Uh, but but I'm, I'm here to let some folk know that, that if, if you're going to be on the assignment, uh, you've got to have a level of belief and trust in God's word. 
you, you've got to have a level of trust that, that when God, God's word says that I can do all things through Christ, that strengthens me. So, so therefore, that, that, that kind of has some implications that, that there's going to be some things that I'm going to, to be a, that, that's going to challenge me. But it lets me know that word, that verse there tells me that I can even get through that thing too. I, I can get over every obstacle no matter what the roadblock is. If there's a hurdle that comes my way, I can, I can make my way over it. Sometimes it may be hard, but, but I can do all things. I, and I like that word because it, it tell, all means all. I, I like the fact that it, all it, he, he doesn't tell me some things. He doesn't tell me the, the, the easy things. God tells me I can do all things. So therefore, no matter what your assignment is, I can do it. It does not matter how hard it is. It doesn't matter what, where it takes you. It doesn't matter who comes at you. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And so, so we have to take comfort in, in that word. The, the thing is, the struggle comes when the assignment collides with reality. See, see, so, see, see the, 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 the difficulty, see, let's be honest. It's easy to walk in the assignment if everything's going your way. It's easy if everybody, it, that, that God puts you in a circumstance, tells you to deliver a word, and, and, and at, at, at the speaking of the word and the, the pearls just falling from your lips, everybody just go, ah, oh, Lord, I'm, I'm saved, delivered, sanctified. And, it, and it, that, it's, it's easy when that happens. But what you going to do when things start going awry? When folks start telling you, I don't want to hear that Jesus stuff. So, so why don't you go somewhere else? I, I'm tired of hearing it. Matter of fact, I think I might hurt you just because you're in my presence. Uh, you know, see, see, it's easy when your finances are, 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 are and everything's going all right. It's, it's easy to follow the assignment when, when, when lots of folks, are, you got a lot of friends by your side and got your back and, and everybody is for you and you're going in the same direction. It, it's easy when, when you're happy in your relationship and, and, and mom and, and, and your husband and wife and children and everybody is, is acting right and, and, and all circumstances are just clicking on all cylinders. It's, it, it's easy when, see, the birds are, are chirping and, and, and ne rain never falls when you're on your day off. You see, it's easy to follow the assignment when, 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 those, when, that, when that happens. But, but what I, I would imagine that there are some folk now that, that are in Southern California. Hmm. That, that, that right now, this week, that when they had, they had a few things, that I would imagine in, in the prior to, to this past week that, that, they were, that they were thinking, look, I'm blessed to live in Southern California. Everything is just so it's wonderful. The weather is wonderful. It's always, you know, it tell, the song says, it never rains in Southern California. It's just beautiful all the time. I would imagine that a few weeks ago, some folk might have been saying, it's just wonderful out in Southern California. But, but I would imagine also that this this circumstances that have happened over the last week, I would imagine that there's some folk that are saying to me that, that, that entered into a, a circumstance where the, the devastation took place. I can imagine that there were probably some believers in the, in the area that, that were on assignment that, and, and all of a sudden lost everything because of two massive earthquakes that hit and, and thousands of aftershocks. I, I can just imagine that at that moment when everything was going well and then they come home and, and they've lost everything. I can imagine that the question on their mind would be, God, why me? God, God I was on assignment. I was doing what you called me to do. And, and all of a sudden, now I've hit this, this roadblock. I've, I've hit this circumstance in my life. And, and I don't know which way to turn. Guess what? The assignment just collided with reality. Uh, stuff, 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 stuff's going to happen in your life. And, and so, so I can see I, I, what, I, what I read was that this, this, these earthquakes happened uh, in this area called Ridgecrest, California. And, and so I started looking, what's in Ridgecrest? And I noticed that there were several churches in Ridgecrest. And, that, and so, some, were, some had major damage to them. I, I can imagine that, that, that the folks in the church were, were, were wondering, God, why the church? 
God, we're doing, we're, 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 I'm paying my tithes. I'm, I'm, I'm doing outreach. I'm, I'm doing everything you've called me to do. I'm making an impact in the community. God, God, there's souls that are being saved. Why the church? God, why would you de- allow damage to, to happen in the church? God, God, I can imagine that there may be somebody saying, why did my assignment collide with reality? To see, to gain a biblical perspective on this, uh, we're, we're, let's, we're going to take a look at, at, at Jeremiah once again. We're going to understand uh, how Jeremiah dealt with the assignment when it collided with reality. Uh, the scripture offers some, some basic truths that, that we can turn to in times uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of the reality hitting our assignment, uh, the reality that comes in your life. And guess what? Every one of us, Let's, let's make sure we're clear up front that every one of us that's on assignment for God is going to have your assignment collide with reality. There's going to be a come, there's going to come a time in your life where you feel like you're reeling out of control. And, and, and I thought everything we had, everything all, all kicked into gear. And, and I thought that we were upright and God had everything under control. And, and, and I was, I, 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 you know, butter didn't melt in my mouth and, 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 and the finances were right. And, and, and everything, my, my home was upright. I had a good job and everything seemed right. But then boom. The assignment collided with reality. You know, see, see, it's easy to believe when it's easy to believe to walk in the assignment when, when there's somebody else that hit reality. It's easy just to say, oh, the Lord is going to bless you. Oh, it's going to be all right when it's somebody else that hit reality. But the question becomes when the reality comes knocking on your door. When, when, when you're walking out the assignment given to you by God and all of a sudden the assignment starts knocking on your door and, and, and the desiring to come in and, and cause you to take a detour uh, from, from what the path that you're on, what you're going to do? Are you going to stand or are you going to fall? Are you going to give in and throw in the towel or, or, or are you going to stay steadfast uh, in the word? Well, Jeremiah, Jeremiah had uh, some had to face some reality in his assignments. Je- Jeremiah had some realities that he had to face. Let's, let me remind you first off the, about the calling that that Jeremiah walked in. Uh, in his assignment was found in 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 Jeremiah one. Verse 4 through 9, it tells us in verses 4 to 9, very quickly, uh, it says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart, uh, appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid. Of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declared the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, Jeremiah's primary concern uh, when he got the assignment, when he was called into the assignment, was that he was too young and didn't have the words to speak to those that he was called to speak to. And so, so, so God gave Jeremiah four encouragements that I think are, are key uh, to help the, that, that were able to help propel him into his assignment. The first thing he said to Jeremiah was that, first off, don't say you're too young. Don't, don't, so so that, that speaks to us today. It does not matter how old you are. It does not matter whether you're young or whether you're old. God, God says, if I called you to it, if I gave you the assignment, I've already prepared you. I've given you everything that you need, whether you're young or whether you're old. You might say, I'm too old for that. Uh, that's, I'll leave that to the young for No, if God called you to the assignment, he's already given you enough stamina. He's already given you the word. He's already strengthened you enough to stand in in the assignment, he told, he told Jeremiah that God, God he said that, 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 that God is with you. I says, says, I'm with you in this assignment. Don't you worry about a thing. Whatever you go through, I'm with you. I'm not going to leave you, as the Bible tells us, in six troubles, and I won't forsake you in seven. So therefore, no matter what you're dealing with, God says, I'm with you. He also told him that said, no matter what troubles you get into, I'm going to rescue you. 
That's the comfort thing there. Not only am I with you, but if something happens, if stuff starts, if, 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 if you start colliding with reality, guess what? I'm going to be right there to rescue you. Don't, don't, don't worry about a thing. And fourthly, fourthly he said, look, guess what? You don't even have to have to worry about the words to speak. Because I'm going to touch your lips and give you the words that I want you to speak. I'm, all I need you to do is be willing. I, I believe that God is looking for some willing folk today. I believe that God is trying to let somebody know that all I need you to do is be in the place. All I need you to do is just go there and open your mouth. I'm going to fill your mouth with exactly what I need you to say. Don't you worry about whether everybody's going to like you. Don't, don't you worry. I'm going to give you the words that I need you to speak. God is just looking for us to, to, be, to be willing and obedient. See, with all this encouragement, I, I would imagine that Jeremiah might have been thinking, well, hey, you know what? All right, you're going to be with me. You're going to rescue me? You're going to give me the words? Well, shucks. Hey, I can, I can handle this one. I got this. Nope, nope. If, if you will give me all that, you know, I know they may not like me. You know, I, I know that where I'm going, I, I know I may have to, to drop a word on somebody that they might not like, but well, hey, God said he's going to be with me. You know, hey, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to encounter. I don't know well, how bad it might be. But if God says he's going to be with me, I got this thing. No problem. I'm just going to be a mouthpiece for God. You know, sometimes we just get happy. We get in that assignment and we think, hey, you know what? It's going to be all why? Because God said I'm, he's with me. And I don't have to worry about a thing. I can deal with all my issues. Guess what? Until reality hits us in the face. I just, I, I, I'm, I'm just want, I want to be real with you. I don't, I don't want you to, to, to walk in this thing and not, not knowing that reality is coming. And so what we found, what we see here is that Jeremiah, he, he was fulfilling the assignment. He proceeded in his assignment over in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. We see that Jeremiah says this. He says, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house and pr there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord. All you people of Judah who come through these gates to worship the Lord, this is what the Lord uh, Almighty, the God of Israel says, reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. Now, not, not Judah. Judah was start. Ju Judah had already uh, committed uh, adultery with, the other, with gods of other nations. And, and so what we see here is that Judah had turned away from God. As much as God had done for them, they had turned away from him. But notice this, God didn't automatically come and destroy them. Uh, we serve a gracious God, and so what he decided to do, I'm going to send me a prophet. I'm going to send Jeremiah. I'm going to put my words in his mouth, and if they only turn around, then I won't destroy them. And, but So Jeremiah delivered the message that if you, if you follow God, guess what? He will allow you to remain in the land in which you live. And the problem is that Jeremiah, he knew that I'm just, I'm a mouthpiece, I, and I, I I got no problems just delivering word. But notice this, Jeremiah warned the people uh, of Judah that what would happen if they, did not, uh, uh, if they did not follow in Jeremiah chapter 10. Verse 17, 18, it says this, gather up your belongings to leave the land. See, they didn't, they didn't listen. Uh, you who live under siege, for this is what the Lord says. At this time, I will hurl out those who live in this land. I will bring distress on them so, they, uh, so that they may be captured. Je Jeremiah was fulfilling an assignment. I'm just, I'm just delivering the word. I'm just, I'm just the mailman. I got nothing to do with what's in the mail. I got nothing to do with the package. All I'm doing, I, God says he's going to put it in my mouth. I'm going to be obedient, and I'm just going to deliver the word. But see, but see, all of a sudden, Jeremiah hits some reality. Je Jeremiah ran into some issues over in, in chapter 11. We see that the people plotted against Jeremiah to kill him. Uh, over in, in chapter 20, we see that Jeremiah was beaten and, and put in the stocks. In chapter 36, we see uh, the, that the king put out an arrest warrant for Jeremiah. In chapter 37, Jeremiah was beaten and, and, it was, and was put in the dungeon. Later, he was chained in, in the courtyard of the guard. We, we see over in chapter 38 that Jeremiah was put into a muddy cistern. And so what is my point? My point is that no, not, not everyone is going to appreciate your word. Not, not everybody. See, 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 Jeremiah was the mouthpiece, but, but they, were, they, were, they were getting on the messenger, and they weren't they were, they were mad, were mad at God. They were mad at Jeremiah. 
And so realize this, everybody is not going to receive your word. Everybody is not going to look at you and see, why wow, you are just tremendously blessed, so therefore I'm going to follow and do what you ask me to do. They're not going to, if you, you may be on an assignment as a husband or a wife, and you know that everybody is not going to look at you uh, trying to be upright in your family. They, they're going to try to break that thing up. Why? Because there's some reality that's going to come. There's going to be some tests that's going to come. And you realize that they're going to come at you and test your resolve. Are you really going to stand? Are you really going to, are you really going to uh, 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 wonder, are you, are you really going to be, stay in that place where God called you to be? I can imagine, I can imagine this point, Jeremiah. If I, I, I come on, let's be real for a second. If I were Jeremiah, look, uh, God, I'm just doing what you asked me to do. I didn't ask for this. I, I, it's not my words. All I'm doing is doing exactly what you said. I can imagine if it, if it were me, I'd be like, look, God, bump this now. Let's be real. God, 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 look, I didn't ask for this. They beat me. They put me in jail. They, 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 they put me in a sister. God, God, it's all because you put these words in my mouth and I'm just, ah, and all, all and it's come, what's coming out is just you, God. And I'm not, it's not me. It's not like I'm trying to sugar. I'm not trying to put any extra on. I'm just saying what God said. But, but, but see, see, now, see this, is the, this is what happens. Sometimes what happens when, 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 when we're in a place where we're delivering the word, we're delivering the mail, they're not going to like you. They're not going to like the, the, the way you're living. Uh, you may, maybe your mail is not even words. Maybe all I'm doing, I'm not telling dirty jokes. I, I'm, not, I'm not hanging around the crowd that's doing all the mess. Well, why would you think you're too good? Why you can't hang out with her? You used to back before you had this Jesus thing going. And, and so, see, they, then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, everybody want to they, they get away from, uh-huh, you just think you're better than us. No, it's just I got Jesus now. Just realize they may not like, they're not going to like. You may, it might not be a word that you're doing. It just could be living your life upright before the Lord. The, the reality, the reality is there. When, when people don't want to hear from you, uh, they don't appreciate the blessing. We, we've got the crab mentality. I see that you're doing great things. I see that God is blessing you. Uh, but because I don't want you to, to get above me, I want to try to pull you back down. I want to discourage you. I, I need somebody to realize that, guess what? Nobody can pull you back down. You've got to allow them to pull you. Nobody can do that on their own. If you decide that I'm going to stay on the wall, you, you, you're going you, you, you to go back and you're going to work on the wall and, and I I'm not going, I, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be, 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 I'm going to go and I'm going to say, God, I'm going to do what you call me to do. God, God I, I don't, I don't care what somebody says. I don't, I don't care how they ridicule me. I don't care how they turn their back on me. I, I, I'm going to stand on the wall. You've got to be, you've got to stand and don't let anybody pull you back. We're on assignment. We're on assignment. We're on assignment. But see, the question becomes, how do you handle it when the assignment collides with reality. How do you deal with it? It's got to be difficult. Let's just, I, I know it's, we, we, can make, we can make it sound real easy, but, but I know it's hard. But how do you deal with the, 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 so when, the, when the assignment collides with reality? Well, there's a right way to deal with it. There's a right response when the assignment collides with reality. The first thing, the first thing you've got to do when the assignment collides with reality is that you've got to remember what God said. Yes. You've got to remember what God said. See, oftentimes we get in those moments and we all of a sudden forget God says, I'm going to take you through this. God, God said, guess what? I'm going to rescue you. I'm going to be with you no matter what you're dealing with. And the many, the, the many times we get in that moment and we forget, oh, Lord, oh, no, woe is me. What am I going to do? No, God, God said, no, I, I told you I'm going to get you through that one. I told you I'm going to rescue you. Look at, what, look at what he says over in Jeremiah verse eight, uh, chapter 1, verse 8. And nine, it says, do not be afraid. I am with you and I will rescue you, declared the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have a word. I have, to, I, I have put my word in your mouth. God never said that the reality uh, of your surroundings and the people that you were not going to encounter them. God never said that this was going to be a rose garden. God, God never said that my assignment was not going to come with challenges. And so God says, I'm going to do two things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. So no matter where you find yourself, you find yourself in jail. Guess what? God says, I'm going to be with you. 
You find yourself in the hospital. Guess what God says? I'm going to be with you. You find yourself homeless on a street corner somewhere. Why? Because I'm fulfilling the assignment of God. Guess what? God says, I am going to be with you. But then on top of that, not only is he going to be with you, he also said, I will rescue you. I think, I think, I think God proposed, proposed, uh, 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 excuse me, God, God's purpose. Uh, he, he didn't give us, he didn't give us a time frame of, on rescue. I, I think that's a good thing. Because if God had given us a time frame on, on rescue, uh, we, we would have sat back. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have, been, we would, we would have, uh, you know, I, I no problem. I just sit back until God comes. I know he's coming tomorrow. And so I don't need, no, no we've got to be diligent. In the midst of our struggle, in the midst, we got to be diligent no matter. So, no, because we don't know the day nor the hour, we don't know when God is going to rescue us, we don't know when He's going to come through. But guess what? If we know that He, if He allowed us to get to it, we know He's going to allow, He's going to get us through it. And so, guess what? I know this, I'm confident in this one thing. If God allowed you to go through some stuff, guess what? He did it because He feels He can trust you. Mm, just ponder that for a second. God, God, I'm going through some difficult times right now. Maybe medical, maybe, maybe financial, whatever. I, I, God, why did I go? If God allowed you into that circumstance, he did it because if he said, remember, remember, he already said, I've empowered you. I've given you the resources. I've said I'm going to be with you. So therefore, if you're in it, God, it didn't take God by surprise. You didn't get in your circumstance and God, oops, oh man, I messed. No, God knew that you were going to be in that circumstance at that time. And he gave you everything that you needed before that. Remember, he's not going to call you into the assignment before you're ready for it. And so therefore, he's given you everything. You've provided all that you need. He called you into the assignment. And now you're walking that thing out. You get into the circumstance where reality hit and we start wondering, no, God wasn't. No, God is saying, look, I've given you all you need. All you need to do is keep working. I called you into that assignment, into that purpose. Why? Because I can trust you. I know you're not going to give up. I know that I've given you all that you need. All we've got to do is keep pressing through. He called us. He wants us to be obedient in the midst of the assignment. He wants us to go through it. I, 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 I'm going to hold on. Too much change comes. I'm going to hold on. Is there somebody in here right now that, God, that you're at that place where you just feel like you're at the end of the rope? I believe sometimes, sometimes we get to that place. Oh, God, if one more thing happens, God, God, I'm going through one thing. And next thing you know, another thing happens. God, God if, if one more thing happens, God, I'm going to let go of this rope. I can't hold on anymore. God, God said, look, don't worry about a thing. I've tied a knot at the end of the rope, and I'm going to make sure you hold on. You're going to hold on through the midst of everything. Every struggle that you're going through, you may not think you can do it, but guess what? God has empowered you to deal with every circumstance. See, 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 see if God said it, that settled it. So how, what you going to do when you're between blessing? What you going to do when you, see, 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 it's easy to, to, to continue on the, in the assignment when God is blessing and everything is going right. But what happens when you're between blessings. What happens when you step out of one blessing and the next one hadn't come yet and you find yourself in the middle? My God, what, what, what happens in that place where, where you feel like you can't see God, you can't hear God, and he, he, he's, he's right there, but, 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 but you just can't, you, you, we just can't hear him. The question is, are you going to hold on? Are you going to stay the course? Are you going to continue in the assignment even in between blessings? Secondly, the thing to have the right response for when, when, you, when your assignment collides with reality is that you've got to take your concerns to God. Take your concerns to God. This, this came, this came, there came a time in Jeremiah's struggle with his call. Jeremiah struggled with the call. It's not, it's, we're not going to get real spiritual. There was a time where the great prophet Jeremiah had a struggle with his call. He struggled. He, he over in Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 7 and 8, he says this. He says, you deceived me, Lord. I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am, I am ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I cry out, I, I cry out proclaiming vil, uh, violence. 
and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. Yet Jeremiah was at a low point in his ministry. He, he was doing what God called him to do. He was doing what well, he was in the assignment and all, all these things happened, getting thrown in jail, getting beaten. And there came a time in Jeremiah's ministry that he said, God, why'd you do this to me? Why did you give me this assignment? But what, what my, my point here is everything and everyone seeming like they were against Jeremiah, Jeremiah knew who to go to. Jeremiah knew who to take his concerns to. You see, God, God, God is a big enough God that he can handle your emotions. God, God, God is, a, is a God that still, he, you know what, he, he still is in, and, and guess what, Sometimes he, it's not going to make him react, not going to make him change his mind, but guess what, he, he's, he's a God that we can, we can take our concerns to, we can take our problems to, we can take our issues to, we can go, just like, just like Job uh, jo went to God and, and said the same, told him the same, God, why did you do this to me? Guess what, God understands that we don't understand. God, God understands that we are, we are finite and he is infinite. He may, we may not understand why he he put us in the circumstance, but and he understands, knows that we don't understand, and so it's okay if we go, God, why? I remember when my brother passed after, after preaching, after the gospel, age 30. <laughs> God, why? Why would you do that? He had a promising life. Why would you do that, God? And you know what? God is so much God that he doesn't, sometimes he don't even have to answer. Because I'm God. Because I'm sovereign. Because I can do what I want to do. Because I've got purpose in what I'm doing. You just may not be able to see it right now. And so therefore, I'm calling you just to be obedient. And see, too often we go to others to complain. We, we go to our neighbor, our brother, complain. You know, we're, we're, I'm, I'm assigned to be a husband. And, and so, so if, if there's some issues in my marriage, you know, what we do sometimes, man, is that we go, we go on the job. I can't believe that woman. I, I can't believe that wife of mine. And, you know, you know, the problem is we get to the, to, the, to the water cooler, and then the Sally's by the water cooler. And I can't, she, she just don't understand me. She, she don't do, do this and she don't do that. And Sally's like, oh, I know what you mean. I wouldn't treat you like that. See, yeah, she, she, she wrong. And you know, I, I, I would take better care of you. That, see, that's the, that's the enemy. See, the enemy knows, he knows exactly what you're dealing with. And he knows that you just need your flesh stroked for a minute. And so he's the person in your path that's going to stroke you. That's the reality hitting your assignment. And the question is, what you going to do when the reality collides with your assignment? Are you going to fall? Or you're going to stand up and go, this is my assignment is to be a husband. I don't care what, what's going on in my marriage. I don't, I don't care. What, it may be a bump in the road right now, but God be a good husband. God, God called me to be a father. And I don't care what, the, what it looks like. There may be some bumps here. There may be some issues there. But guess what? I'm going to do what God called me to do. And so, so, so be careful. Be careful about sharing your business. See, the problem is sometimes we, 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 we want to give our, we wanna, our burden on somebody else. And the burden that we're putting on them might be the thing that breaks them. You don't realize they may be burdened right now as well. And so here I am now unloading my issues. Yeah, because, oh, things aren't going well. I, I, I'm, I'm walking for the Lord. I'm giving my tithe. And now I lost my job. Oh, woe is me. What am I going to do? You know, sometimes there's some things that I just got to take to the Lord. There's some things that I can't, I can't share with my brother and my sister. There's some things that I, I, I may not be able to share with my wife. I, there's some things. I just got to go to God. I just got, Lord, I know, I know I don't know the circumstances. I don't know what's going on. I just need to let, I just need to vent. I realize you've got this in control. I know that you've got me covered. I know that I'm going to be all right. But God, I just got to let you know something I'm just hurting right now. It's all right. It's all right. We, we, Jeremiah, Jeremiah went to God and he took his concerns to him. But the thirdly, the third, the third thing that's important that we do, the right response for, for, for when, when our assignment collides with reality, the third thing we have to do is allow God to bring justice. That, that's a difficult one for us. Allow God to bring justice. See, even though Je Jeremiah didn't understand why he had to do everything, he was mocked, he was, he, he was insulted, he was threatened, he was in prison. He didn't realize why he had to go through all of this, but he allowed God because God said, I'm going to rescue you. 
Jeremiah trusted God's word when he said, I'm going tr- I'm to I- I'm rescue you. So therefore, all Jeremiah had to do, I'm going to keep on going. God, I don't know when you're going to do it. I- I'm trusting that at some point you're going to come through. We need to have that, that kind of moment. God, I don't know when, but I'm trusting you. I-, I don't know how, but I'm trusting you. God, God, I may be hurting right now, but God, I'm trusting you. I, I can't lift my arm right now, but God, I'm trusting you that at some point everything is going to be all right. God, God, I don't know what. I know what the day is, and sometimes the doctor don't know. So, God, I'm trusting you. And so, so, so we've got to allow God to bring justice. Uh, Jeremiah also wrote the book of Lamentations, and he lamented uh, in the ch- third chapter of the book of Lamentations, verses 57 to 59. It says this. It says, you came near when I called you, and you said, <clears throat> do not fear. You, Lord, took up my case. You redeemed my life. Lord, have, have, you have seen the wrong done to me. Uphold my cause. I, I can, see, I, I can just go to the Lord as my judge. God, God you saw everything they did to me. God, God I just, reality of, 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 of folks putting brick walls in front of me. I just hit the reality of, of people being against me and not liking me and turning against me and doing me wrong. God, God I'm not going to defend myself. God, I'm going to bring that, that case to you. Lord, you saw what they did. God, God you, you, you know. But see, understand this. If God puts you on assignment, be, the, woe to that come and stand in your way. It, if God puts you on assignment and somebody going to stand up against you, I just feel sorry for them because the Bible tells me over in 1 Chronicles 16 and 22 tells me, do not touch my anointed one. Do my prophet no harm. So guess what? Be careful if you're getting in the way of my assignment because God may run over you. I'm just trying to let somebody know. You need to let some, you need to, you need to be able to be bold. If God says, "Look, I put you on assignment," if someone has the nerve, the gall, the the chutzpah to stand up in front of you, guess what? I've got this thing. All you do is bring that thing to me. Don't you worry about. It. They may stand for a moment, but guess what? They will fall. And I need to let somebody know. It may not be in the time your time, but God is gonna take care of your business. All you gotta do is continue to walk up right before you. All you gotta do is continue to be on assignment. God's got this thing. I can just walk up just like my God. God, uh-uh. he 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 he's trying to block me. God, it's, I'm. I'm doing your thing, God. God, I just need you to take him out. No, I don't mean take him out. I, I, I need to move him aside, God. <laughs> I, I, I just need you to do what you want to do. See, you see, just like, just like Job, just like Job, Job lost everything. And, and he put his petition before the Lord. And at the end of Job's life, at the end of the story, rather, Job got double, double for what he had with his trouble. And so, so likewise, instead, instead of seeking revenge, Jeremiah uh, had renewed confidence in God. Look at, look at verse, uh, chapter 20, verse 11. It says, but the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior, so, so, so my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. So guess what? Be mindful, church folk. Be careful. When, when, when we're walking out uh, we were our assignment and we think that we're being holy and telling somebody else, no, the Lord didn't tell you that. Maybe you should just sit on down and don't know. No, to be careful, church folk, because sometimes we get in folks' way and they're on assignment and we try to get them off track and be careful because God and take care of them. And so, so, so finally, finally, the thing that if you, the, the way to deal with, with when your assignment uh, re- collides with reality, the, 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 the next, the last response is that we've got to worship during the hard times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got to worship in times. See, when things are going bad, when, when things uh, need, when you, when you need answers, when, when, when life it, it, it deals you out what you're not expecting, uh, our tendency is to run from God. And so Jeremiah teaches us to run to God. Look in verse, chapter 20, verse 13 tells us this, Lord, give praise to the Lord. He rescues the life of the needy from the hands of the wicked. In this very passage, this is the very same passage, this is the same chapter that Jeremiah went to God first complaining and then, and then also talking about, God, I need you to take out these folk. And now he's saying, look, God, you. 
I, I'm going to praise your name. God, God I'm going, I don't care what's going on around me. I, I, I had my pity party. I, I had my complaint party. Now, God, I've gotten through all that, and I realize, God, I realize that my change is coming. I, 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 for a moment there, come on, let's be real. For a moment there, I, I lost something. For, for a moment there, I, 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 and I didn't realize, I forgot for a moment what you said, but God, I've got my senses back. So God, I need you. I'm going to praise you now in the middle of my circumstance. No matter what I'm going, when your assignment collides with reality and it seems like you can't make it through, you got to praise God in the middle of that circumstance and God will get you through. Sometimes talk to yourself. There's some time, I don't, I'm, I'm going to let somebody know, there were some times when I was going through my issues with my surgery and I had to talk to myself. I, I Sometimes I had to turn on my phone and just say and just look at myself. You know, I said, Lord, uh, uh, brother man, um, uh, see, I need you to know. I need you to realize it could be worse. Uh, I, I need you to understand something. I need you to know something. You see, you see, you may be going through it right now. I know that sometimes you feel like you can't do what you want to do, but, so, but guess what? There are some folk that you read about that had palsy in both arms, so guess what? Pray that you only got it in one, so praise him in the middle of it. We need to let God know, look, let yourself know, look at yourself sometimes and tell, look, I'm going to make it. You, I don't care what it looks like. You are going to make it. Encourage yourself. Pick yourself up. Let them let yourself know. Take your, uh, to look at yourself in the face of day. I've Dying. I may be, you know, I may be weak right now. It may look bad right now, but I'm gonna make it. You, you gonna make it? Sometimes you, because guess what? I get down. I don't know about you. There are times when I get discouraged. There are times when I start, oh God, woe is me. I gotta look at myself. I praise God for my wife that she can encourage me. But there's some times when I'm by myself, and I start, oh man, I could be doing X. Oh, why? But if I, but, but, but I got these medical, I got these physical issues. Oh, whoa. But I need, sometimes I got to talk to myself and say, Lord, let me, look, man, let me tell you something. Pick yourself up. Dust yourself off. And you're going to be all right. I don't care what they say. You are still on assignment. And as long as you stay the course, as long as you're obedient to the word of God, to the will of God, good, you can just praise him in the middle of it. I don't care what you're going through. You can be down and out. You can lost loved ones. You can still hear your head to the heels from when cometh your help and tell the Lord, I still trust you. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard. But we've got to let the world, we've got to let the enemy know. I choose God. I choose God. And then finally, let me just let me just finish this. See, see, when reality, when the reality hits, my admonition to you today is to stick with the assignment. Because guess what? Reality is going to hit. I didn't say if. When the reality hits, stick with the assignment. Stay with it. Don't, 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 don't leave. Jeremiah had predicted Judah fell to the, to the Babylonians. Judah fell just to the people that God had told him that they were going to, we were going to go down to. But then notice this, watch this. You would think that after the Babylonians came in and they did exactly what Jeremiah told them they would do, you would, you would think, would start realizing, hey, you know what, maybe I need to listen. Maybe I need to follow this Jesus or this God, this just God. Maybe, maybe I need to listen to what Jeremiah is saying. But the interesting thing is they came to Jeremiah and they asked him. Now, this is just the remnant that was still in Judah. And they asked him, what does the Lord say? Should we stay here or sh and go over to Egypt? Jeremiah went to the Lord. He asked, him, asked the Lord. He beseeched the Lord. What should we do? A and the Lord came back to Jeremiah and said, stay right here. Don't do, don't you move. Don't you go anywhere. And so they went, he came back to the elders and told them, look, this is what the Lord says. The Lord says, stay right here. The elders of the church said, look, you're lying. No, he didn't. So we're going to get up and go. See, these are stiff necked people. We're, we're, I, don't, I don't believe you. So therefore, we're going to get up and go over to Egypt. And guess what? Guess what God did? Fine. You're going to go to Egypt? Guess what? I'm going to have Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians. They're going to conquer Egypt too. And I'm going to get other. And so, so I believe that. Now notice this. Now un interestingly enough, if you read through the text, you'll find that when they decided to leave and go to Egypt. Now remember, Jeremiah was t told them you should stay right here. But they decided to leave. Jeremiah decided, look. I'm, I'm going I'm to go and go with him. 
he decided I'm going to get up and I'm going to go to Egypt with him. And, and so I started questioning, well, God, why would he do that? Why, why would Jeremiah do this? And so with, uh, there were three things I think are very important that Jeremiah possessed in his assignment that caused him to want to go over to, to, to Egypt with the, 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 the disobedient uh, folks from Judah. And I believe there's something interesting that I think is there are three things. The first thing that we see with Jeremiah is that he, he recognized that he had a calling from God. He had a calling to speak the word to the people of Judah. And so I believe, I believe that Jeremiah recognized that if I'm here in Judah and they're off in Egypt, I can't speak a word. They're not, they won't get a word from there. Therefore, my assignment was to speak to them. So I'm going to go along in order to be able to, to, to fulfill the assignment. I believe, number two, that he saw that he saw a great need in the people. He recognized that this is a stiff-necked people. He recognized that these folk have a need. And guess what? If they go over there without a word, they're going to get worse. And so I believe that Jeremiah had a caring for the people so much so that he was willing to go with them, even though he recognized they were being disobedient. And finally, finally, I believe that that God had put a fire down within him that even if he wanted to not deliver that word, he couldn't do it. The Bible tells us after 20 verse 9, it tells us this. But if I say I will not mention his word or speak anymore in his name, in in his, his word is in my heart like a fire a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it. Indeed, I cannot. When God gives you an assignment, I don't care whether it takes you to lands. I don't care if it takes you in a place where you're not comfortable with. If God gave you an assignment, I declare you need to go wherever the assignment says go. You need to do whatever the assignment says do. I, I know that there's going to be a reality that's going to hit. There's going to be a time where you don't want to do what God has called you to do. There's some times when I'm running up and that I think to myself, I don't want to go love you and everything, but I don't want to go. And but I believe that God has given me an assignment. God, God put something on my heart. He said, I, I believe them years ago. I, there's something about teaching and preaching the gospel that he's put in my passion in my heart. If you don't know what your assignment is, look for what your passion is. God would take me from this place right now. He would put me somewhere else so that I can teach and preach the gospel because it's something on the inside of me that is just burning on the inside. What is your passion? What is the assignment God has given you? No matter what you run up against, no matter what the brick wall is you run up against, I declare today you need to stay on your assignment. The reality it is, no matter how hard it may seem, stay on your assignment. God is looking for a people that will be obedient to the assignment. I declare right now that God is asking us, is imploring us, don't throw in the towel. I know it may be hard. Some of you right now may be walking through a difficult time where you, you, you never anticipated this to hit you in your middle of your assignment. You never anticipated God will allow this circumstance to happen in your life. Even though you were assignment, all of a sudden reality reared its ugly head. And now you find yourself asking whether I should continue. Should I keep pressing? Should I keep going? God God has empowered you. God God has encouraged you. And he has embraced you. God, God, press on. I've got you. I'm never going to leave you. I've got your back. I've got your front. I've got your side. I'm all around you. Don't you worry about a thing. And, and, and no matter what you're dealing with, and there was some circumstance. I don't know, but, but there, I talked about my assignment as a husband. You know, there were some folks at my job that, that don't like going home. When it's time to get off, they're looking for everything to do. They're trying to find everything to do because of the mess going on in their house. And I tell them, no, 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 no. I like going home. <laughs> oh, yeah. After 32 years, I still enjoy going home. Matter of fact, I can get everyone home. Hallelujah. <laughs> because, I, because I realize God has put me on assignment and my assignment, I don't care what the circumstance is. I don't care how hard it may seem. I don't care what difficult. Guess what? 32 years, there's been some ups and some downs. But you know what? God, God says you stick this thing out. You press forward. I don't care what it hurt. looks, how hard it is. You press this thing forward because I've got you. In the end, you're going to prosper. In the end, everything is going to be all right. No matter what the challenge is in your, li- your life, it's time for us to make up our minds that I'm going to remember what God says. I'm going to 
take all my concerns to God. I'm not allow. I'm going to allow God to be the justice, take care of the justice and the injustices that are done against me. And I'm going to worship him in the midst of it. We need to make up our mind today. You are on assignment. Every last one of us is on an assignment. Maybe yours is big or small. Big is in the eye of the beholder. So whatever your assignment is, when the roadblocks come, when the reality hits and it collides with your assignment, I declare that we need to push our way through. Don't allow your, your, your reality to come in the way and block your assignment. I believe today that there's some folks in here today that you're at a place where your reality is getting bigger and bigger and bigger to the place where you're wondering whether you can even make it. Come on, stand to your feet. Today.